Hello all, this is David Williams. Important. The enemy is described, the very first definition or description that we have of the devil in the Bible is that he's crafty. He's subtle, meaning he does things and acts in ways that you cannot detect. So one of the ways the adversary works is through your sin, meaning he provokes you to sin and then he attacks your life. Now, sin is when God wants you to do something and you don't do it or you do the opposite. That's what sin is. The scripture says in Romans chapter, I believe it's three, where it says all have sinned for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, a very common sin that we commit is the sin of strife. We get into arguments, it happens on a consistent basis, whether you're on social media or having a phone conversation, but you find yourself in these situations where there's a back and forth, there's an argument. You should never argue. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is you should never let yourself get to a certain emotional point that you are being intentionally combative or aggressive. And when I say intentionally, you know, we've got mental intentions and then we've got m emotional intentions. When you talk about the mental intention, we're talking about things that we are planning to do. When we talk about emotional intentions, we're talking about feeling a way that is overwhelming emotionally, meaning our feelings are welling up and our brain is just responding to what our feelings are commanding of it. Well, that's still intentional. It's just from the emotions as opposed to a planned out thing. So you may be verbally aggressive or offensive towards someone and you didn't plan on doing that, but your emotions, your feelings of anger or frustration, it got the best of your judgment and you responded you sp you responded according to how you were feeling it was still intentional so the devil works against us in that area ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 on down it says finally my brothers be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the many tricks of the devil which is an evil spirit that governs a kingdom of evil spirits for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places so there are people who don't believe the truth of god and they're going to come at you they're going to confront you because you believe the truth of god and if you try to oppose them out of your emotions or thoughts, the devil can use that sin as a means of attacking your life. So the devil is using people's conversations that become contentious emotionally and mentally. He's using people's sarcasm to afflict them, to poison their bodies to curse them with sicknesses, to afflict them with thoughts of discouragement and backsliding and lust. The devil is using people's passion for God against them because we don't readily understand how to know when we're being aggressive, when we're being combative, when we're being argumentative. We don't understand that strife and contention, that those are works of the flesh. And if you walk in the flesh, then the unclean spirit that governs the kingdom of unclean spirits can come at you and try to ruin your life from within because he gets permission from God through your sin to, to destroy your life because the punishment for sin is death and death comes in a variety of forms 
And so we have to be mindful that the whole armor of God isn't just a spiritual form of defense. It's also a, a natural, and when I say natural, what I'm saying is there are things that you should be doing that will defend you from satanic attack in the spirit. So the armor of God is also a natural form of defense. My understanding that my eternity rests in the presence of God, that defends me from feeling, feeling the need to respond to the insults of the people around me. I may feel the need to confront someone, to aggressively rebuke someone who's trying to discredit me or tear down my, 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 my integrity or embarrass me or, or, or slander my name. I may feel the need to aggressively confront them, but I'm not fighting against flesh and blood. That doesn't mean that the person that I'm contending with isn't flesh and blood. That, that means that the person who I'm contending with may not be motivated by simple thought and feeling. Now, the person that you're contending with may believe the things that they do, which clash with your beliefs. Fine. So we are clashing with our beliefs. Our beliefs are clashing. But the problem with that is that there are spirits attached to those beliefs that taught us those things. So if you are communicating with someone and you are and you are arguing back and forth, you are debating the positions of two invisible kingdoms, God and the devil. And so whoever if you prevail, it's the kingdom of God prevailing. If they prevail, it's the kingdom of darkness prevailing. So when they are talking and you cannot convince them, they are at a loss. If they don't understand and submit to the knowledge of God that you should be bringing, they will remain in bondage and die in their sins. If people around you are convinced that they are right in their demonic bondage, those people, if they live out that lie, are going to die in their sins. So we seek the Lord in prayer and worship and fasting and in the, not in the reading and the, uh, and the absorbing and the learning of God's word. We learn it. We read it. And as we do that, the spirit of God will give us more power to win people to him. But it's not our emotionally... Uh, uh, outrageous statements. It's not our sarcasm. It's not our constant inundation, inundating the person, flooding the person with clips and articles and reports and info. That's not what wins people per se. Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 how the kingdom of God comes with power and the demonstration of the spirit not with words of man's wisdom. And so understand that once you can be pulled from a position of peace and focus on God, once you get into your ungodly emotions, once that malice starts to come in, come about, once that bitterness uh, and, and, and that feeling of aggravation, agitation, frustration comes to the surface, the devil has access to your body. He has access to your mind. He has access to your emotions. So that's what his subtle tricks and attacks are intended to do. He's trying to destroy you and if possible from within. So while he might not get you to convert to Islam, he might not get you to become Jehovah's Witness. His intention is to destroy you from within by destroying your ability to live for God and destroying your reputation. There's a reason why the scripture tells us not to, not to answer a fool according to his foolishness. 
or else we will be like him. But it says answer fool according to his foolishness or else he'll be wise in his own conceits. That doesn't mean that you get so emotionally involved that you sin. It says the servant, scripture says the servant of the Lord must not strive. If people don't want it, then there's a time when you don't, when you refuse to give, as Jesus said, that which is precious and valuable unto pigs and dogs. He wasn't talking about actual animals. He was talking about people. So the Lord does consider certain people to be pigs and dogs when they rebel against him and don't want his truth. So understand, family, that the spirit of God wants to protect you. And that might mean you can't protect yourself. That might mean you can't go back and forth. That might mean that you can't clear your name yourself with your human words. It might mean just that. It might mean what Jesus said in Matthew 5 when he said not to resist evil yourself. And it might mean what the Lord spoke through one of the other men of God where he says, where it says, uh, don't avenge yourselves. I believe that's in Romans either chapter 12 or 14. I don't remember offhand. It might be even in Romans 13. But to give place to wrath because God wants to defend us. But God also knows how fragile we are and how easy you and I can, can get into our flesh. It's Romans 12 verse 19. So we have to we have to be mindful of that. We've got to keep that in mind. We have to remember that the enemy will work against your your disobedience. If you disobey God, it doesn't matter how right you are. It doesn't matter how wrong the other person is. If you and I disobey God, we're going to get hurt because the adversary he capitalizes off of our disobedience. So refrain refrain get a hold of your emotions get a hold of your flesh get a hold of your thoughts don't allow your emotions don't allow your your so-called zeal to get you into trouble with god if you get into trouble with god then you have lost the battle already regardless of how effective of a debater you've become this is David Williams with Jesus Ministries, and we'll talk again.